So apparently a food restaurateur here in, in Ottawa caused me some food poisoning. So even the restaurateurs are trying to stifle my freedom of speech because <laughs> I almost didn't make it to the session. Uh, so what are some strategies for stifling opposing opinions? If you live in a dictatorship, then of course you just kill the intellectuals. Those who oppose you, you get rid of them. If you are unable to implement such a strategy, then you perhaps have some hate speech laws or some campus speech codes. And of course, what flows from that is the third uh, way to stifle people is to create an environment that is sufficiently ominous that people engage in self-censorship. This picture right here is worth a thousand words. It basically says we condemn freedom of speech that hurts other people's feelings. <laughs> what I'm going to do for the rest of today's uh, lecture is simply read to you first-person accounts of emails that I receive. I receive these, and they're innumerable how many I receive, where, where either students, professors, parents are writing to me to document the stuff that they are facing on campuses. And the best way to actually show you this is to just read a bunch of them. So bear with me as I actually go through about seven or eight of these. The clock, by the way, is not working, so I don't know how much time we have, but I'll assume we're okay. So here is a student testimony example one. I'm a 47-year-old white male who, because of an injury, made a choice to return to school. Sadly, it looks like my path through university is going to be interrupted. In the first year to maintain full-time status, I'm forced to take another social justice Black Lives Matter course. The challenge is students are not allowed to challenge or question the course content because that's considered disrespectful and may disrupt someone's safe space. I believe I'm a respectful student with good attendance and whose marks average in the mid 80s. That said, after a few weeks of the one-sided syllabus, I'm considering dropping out of the program and leaving school entirely. This leftist academic world is a little too much for me. Testimony two. Today we had a panel discussion on the Quebec City shooting with two historians and two sociologists where I was told with solemn, moral, righteous tone that there is no such thing as good and bad immigrants. My heart was racing and my teeth were clenched sorry, and grinding listening to this. Finally, despite my heart beating out of my chest, I asked the question, how do you, the panel, interpret Charlie Hebdo, the Danish cartoon, ISIS, Salman Rushdie, and the Bataclan shootings? The denial of individual responsibility and complete disregard for any value-based interpretation was off the table. I think I screwed myself because I'm pretty sure my professor is, let's say, quite suspicious of me now. Because this person aired his opinion, he knows that he's in trouble. I just feel really alone, but the thought of restoring strength, tolerance, and diversity of thought to the university really keeps me going. Today just really proved to me that I'm up against and how alone I am. What can I do? I'm reaching out to you in the hopes that the Godfather, that's yours truly, <laughs> would be able to help direct my future research projects since most professors and required courses I have to take seem to be run by social justice warriors feigning intellectualism. The reason I'm contacting you is because as an honors cognitive student, part of my requirements is to complete 12 credits worth of individual research However, because of purely political reasons, I'm apparently a violent, misogynist, racist, Trump supporter. I have not only lost my job at a prestigious behavioral neuroscience laboratory, I, I hid the identity at YYY, but my name has been removed from the publication on research I personally conducted, and the lead researcher told me that he would never work with me again. This is not North Korea. This is Canada, this is the US. Help. I'm a fourth year student in a five year teaching program. I'll be heading to YYY next year for my one year of teacher's college. Only recently have I realized the radical left wing messages embedded in virtually all of my classes and I know that it will only get worse at the school in question. What can I do about this? How do I stand up for the truth without risking my career as an elementary school teacher? Thank you. Let's move on to some faculty. Those were all students. I very much appreciate your courage to fight the cancer that is taking over American academia. People like me feel cheated in their attempt to pursue a tenure track career. It only takes a glimpse to the job offerings that the Modern Language Association publishes each year to understand what is expected from recent graduates like me. It is political activism, and I refuse to mix that with my academic interests. 
I will save you my long stories of dealing and suffering career-wise from politically correct nonsense from the directions of feminism, gender ideology, trans extremism, and Islamophilia. I am trying to keep a lid on things for now, as my wife is, very, is a very promising academic but hasn't secured a position yet. I know that if I started voicing my thoughts and arguments on social media, she'd be completely shut out of the ac academy. If she does secure a tenure track spot, I'm off to the races and you and others would see that I'm an ally to take notice of, seriously. I'm more than happy to transition out of philosophy at this point, which has become a virtue signaling competition. As a fellow professor who has been frustrated by the discourse within academia on issues such as political correctness, moral relativism, and social justice, I'd like to thank you for speaking up the way you have been from within academia. While my training and research is further removed from social issues than yours, I have nevertheless been frustrated by the conformism and groupthink I see and hear around me. I see otherwise very reasonable and capable people abandoning reason and cowing to the narrative of the regressive left on many social issues. These are all things which I would like to get involved in once the tenure decision is behind me, about one year to go. As upsetting as it is, one fears expressing unpopular social ideas prior to tenure. In the meantime, please keep fighting the good fight for freedom of speech and against thought policing and orthodoxy. Almost done. I won't read this whole one, but basically this person writes to me uh, thanking me for my conversation with Sam Harris agreeing with some of the issues that I raised regarding some you know, issues dealing with Islam. But then look at the bottom, he says, if you decide to mention this information in your videos, I would ask that you do so without mentioning my name. I do not have tenure yet. This is from a, uh, this is the last testimony and then I'll wrap up. This is from a parent of a high school student I recently received an email from my son's school district that they are going to be screening a film called I'm Not Racist, Am I? as an in-school field trip at the end of January for high school students. I did some preliminary research on this and I'm absolutely appalled at the content of the movie. Based on the descriptions, the trailer, and additional material surrounding it, it appears to be a feature-length film pushing the agendas of white privilege, institutional racism, and white people are the problem. It scares me beyond belief that they are attempting to force these ideas on developing minds. And now, of course, the usual uh, request that they be anonymous. For reference, my son is a junior at XXX. I have included the original email as well as the PDF of the communication that was sent out. If it is something you feel you should, you sh should be shared with others, I only ask that you keep identifiable information for my son or myself out for our safety. This is not North Korea for his safety. I'm sure you understand. So to conclude, freedom of speech is everything. And I should know I come from the Middle East. I escaped that which you don't want to have replicate here in Canada. So no more language police, no more thought police, no more echo chambers that shun intellectual diversity, no more identity politics, no more culture of offense and the ethos of perpetual victimhood, no microaggressions, no trigger warnings, no safe spaces, and no cultural appropriation. Science, reason, and logic trump, trump, ideology and feelings. Thank you very much. <laughs>